Hello everyone, yes, welcome back to The Long Dark, sort of, yeah, this is a slightly different series, uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing some tutorials, I've decided to do a tutorial series, the tutorials always seem to go down really well, and um, a load of people have asked various questions about how The Long Dark's played and how various things work, so I thought I'd go through that, so in this little series of videos, we're just going to go through the game, we're going to go through the elements of the game, we're going to have a look at everything and how it all works. Now you're going to have to forgive me though with this first video because I have been having an absolute nightmare with my microphone and audio recording equipment. So this is actually post commentary. I did record the audio live when I did the video but unfortunately it's been so, it was so poor I'm having to do it again and I've had to do an awful lot of work to fix the microphone. So this is post commentary and all the fun of guesswork of what I said before and what I did that goes with it. But yes we're going to have a go at some tutorials and today we are here on the main menu screen we're going to have a look through the menus and the game mode so let us launch into the long dark bringing up the main menu screen you see i put a little mark on the video so i knew that was going to come up uh, from this point on i am flying blind you can see the various different game modes that are available uh winter mute survival mode the challenges we've got extras options and of course quit but why would we want to do that we've only just started uh, but these are the various different game modes of the long dark um this is the point where I have to start guessing. Extras are your journals. Uh, you, when you do a sandbox game, at the end of it, you can save your journals, um, which is basically is like a little statistical um, hit list of what happened. And of course, you can view the credits if you want. The options, you've got various options that you can change. It's all fairly simplistic, fairly standard. Uh, changing the controls, the audios, qualities, display, all that kind of stuff. I've got everything whacked up to maximum because my PC can handle it. Um, you may need to tweak these. Uh, if your PC can't. I'm using the default control settings by the way, I haven't changed anything. Okay, so up at the top we've got the three main game modes which are uh, Winter Mute, Survival Mode and the Challenges. So Winter Mute is the main uh, story mode of the game and I'm really hoping that I open it up in a moment. Uh, Wintermute is the main story mode of the game. It's relatively new. Um, the game's been in development for quite a few years now, but uh, Wintermute is the big, big thing that they've been working towards for most of that time, the narrative story mode, uh, which uh, you can go back and view my Wintermute playthrough series if you haven't already seen it, if you want to see a little bit more about Wintermute uh, and what's involved in the story mode. It's um, sort of a combination of survival sandbox and following through the story and doing missions and various things like that. Um, I'm not going to go into too much in, in detail about Wintermute here. Um, I think you're better off if you if you want to find out a bit more about Wintermute, uh, head over to my Wintermute playthrough series. The the actual controls and the way the game works and the survival parts of the game are the same in Wintermute and in survival mode. Survival mode is the sandbox mode of the game. It's completely open world. Uh, you can pretty much do uh, anything that you want to in survival mode. Um, survival mode is the main part of the game that's been in development since uh, it launched. So story mode is the thing that everyone's been working towards, but uh, sandbox is the one that's actually been available uh, right from the get-go. And the one that most players are familiar with, it's completely open world um, sandbox. You have complete free reign. You can go wherever you like within the game world. There's multiple different regions um, and you can go pretty much anywhere. And the goal of survival mode is to survive. Survive as long as you can. Um, there is no end game. You literally just keep going as long as you can. Try and survive as many days as possible. Um, so you kind of, there's no quests, there's no missions, there's no goals. So you kind of have to make your own up to keep yourself going. But you just need to gather your resources, uh, gather all the things and, and bits and pieces that you need to survive. Now, at this point I'm flicking around between extras and options and I have no idea why. Um... This is the problem of doing post-commentary. It's remembering what you did while you were doing it when you did the original tutorial video. I'm hoping in a second I open up survival mode. And I'm also hoping that you guys can still hear me because uh, I've noticed I've dropped down to being mono audio. Uh, I'm having some real audio uh, recording issues at the moment. And uh, I believe I'm only recording on one audio channel. Uh, my uh, I use a um, condenser microphone which is 
phantom power and unfortunately my uh, phantom power injector is playing up uh, the challenges is the other game mode um that we are going to uh, have a quick look at here i forgot i actually uh, went into challenges before i went into survival mode. challenges are in survival sandbox uh, but there is a very specific goal in mind they're really designed for kind of short-term play rather than long-term sandbox survival, um, there is a specific task for you to do. Uh, they're quite challenging. They are quite difficult. The difficulty levels are quite high. We'll talk about difficulty levels in a bit. Difficulty levels are quite high. So don't leap straight into the challenges if you've never played the game before because you just won't last very long. Particularly if you try and do the hunted. That's really quite tricky. Um... Nomad and Whiteout are a little bit easier. You uh, basically in Nomad, you just have to travel around the game world and survive for three days in uh, each of fifteen locations around the game world. So you're quite you are nomadic. You've just got to carry with you all your supplies and and just stay in each location for a few days. Hunted, you're being hunted actively by a very aggressive bear, and that really is a big challenge. Uh, so these are designed really for one play session or maybe a couple few hours of play. Uh, rather than long-term survival so they are the challenges they're kind of cool we'll probably do a few videos on the challenges at some stage maybe even a live stream if i can get a good enough internet connection but for now the biggie the biggie in the long dark is uh survival sandbox and i think that's where we're going to go now i've already talked about survival what's involved in it so if we just set up a new game you can see um let me just uh I'm just probably just going to muck around at this point and uh, set ourselves a new uh, game. You can only you can have five concurrent sandbox games playing. So I just need to delete one of my tutorial ones. We have four different difficulty settings. So we've started up a new game. We have four different difficulty settings. Pilgrim is the easiest, and it is really quite easy. It's it's geared at brand new players, uh, or if you really just want to go into exploration in great detail. Uh, most of the survival elements are incredibly forgiving. You won't freeze to death very quickly. You won't starve very quickly. You won't die of thirst very quickly. Resources are incredibly plentiful. You'll find lots and lots of man-made packaged food and things like that in all of the buildings that you can go in and loot um you can get hold of water really easily you can get hold of firewood re really really easily to make water uh the wildlife also will not attack you unless you attack it first so if you walk past the bear the bear will run away from you um whereas in the other game modes it will attack you um so unless you actively attack the wolves or the bears they will just run away they will just leave you so it's a great if you're just starting out in the game and you just want to get used to how the game works or if you want to go into exploration and you want to just just walk around the game worlds and and find out what's happening voyager is one step up from that so it's a little bit more challenging um wildlife is sparse there isn't so much you know aggressive wildlife out there but it will hunt you down so if you go near it it will attack you so that is one difference so um unlike pilgrim it will attack you but there isn't that much of it uh, survival elements are a little bit more challenging you will freeze starve and, and die first a little bit more quickly resources are still fairly plentiful there's a, f a, a bit less than you'll find in pilgrim but they're still fairly easy to find um so it's it's a step up really so if you're kind of used to things in pilgrim you find it a bit easier easy and you want a little bit more of a challenge voyager is the place to go you can put uh, four active feats in voyager feats are something i'll talk about in another video um but you can have four of them in voyager stalker is the mode if you've seen any of my other series stalker is the mode that i usually play in up until recently it has been the hardest difficulty setting uh, it is for more experienced players it's a lot more challenging Hostile wildlife is far more common. There's a lot of it about. Wolves hunt in packs. There's more bears wandering around. Uh, and they will actively hunt you. So it's not just that they'll attack you if you go near them. They will actively try and find you. So it's it's much, much more challenging. And you also take a lot more damage from wildlife attacks. The survival elements are a lot more challenging. You'll freeze very quickly. You'll starve very quickly. You'll die of thirst very quickly. So it, it's a lot more challenging. You have to manage your resources more. There are a lot less resources around as well. You have to work harder to find them and craft them. You have to make more resources in stalker mode. So stalker is the hard mode. Uh, which is the mode I normally play in. You can have three active feats in this. And again, I'll talk about feats and various things like that in another video. And I'm hoping in a moment I'll click down onto Interloper. Interloper is a relatively new 
uh, difficulty setting and you can call it the extreme difficulty or hardcore difficulty if you'd like uh, it's really for very experienced very expert players it really is a survival challenge it's if you want to do any kind of exploration of the map don't bother going into interloper it's a real challenge you'll start with really minimal resources you'll find little if any man-made resources anywhere to loot food and things like that and clothing you just won't find them you pretty much have to craft everything you need so you have to find your resources you have to craft everything including clothes food you have to survive off the natural world more um, and the world becomes more hostile the longer you survive so animals will become more common and they'll become more aggressive so it really is a real hardcore challenge i've never played on interloper Okay, so for all the purposes of the tutorial videos, we're going to drop into Pilgrim mode. Now, in future tutorial videos, I think I'll probably amend this because I think uh, Pilgrim is is a little bit too easy for me. Um, or am I going to go into Stalker? This is this is part of the problem of re-recording things. I can't remember what I actually did. Um, but we're going to set up a game. Uh, I'm going to go into Stalker mode. There we go. Okay, so these are the game regions. There are several regions. Mystery Lake. Mystery Lake is the oldest and original of the game regions. When the game first launched, Mystery Lake was the main map. Uh, regions equals maps. Uh, they all interlink together. There are multiple regions. They all link together via transition areas. So you can pretty much you can walk between them. So you can travel from Mystery Lake to Coastal Highway and to Pleasant Valley, which are two of the other regions, via two different transition zones. Uh, Mystery Lake focuses around the lake, which is bang in the middle of it. Uh, there's also a couple of other inhabitable buildings. It's a really good place, actually. It's, it's a great place for new players. There's lots of man-made structures, uh, which gives you really good shelter. There's good resources and wildlife. It's quite a nice starting point. For brand new players and of course it's also central you've got a couple of regions that link to it so you can travel off to other parts of the world uh, quite easily really and it is the most developed and the oldest region in the game uh, it was the one the game launched with and for quite a while after it launched it was the only available region in the game so most experienced players know mystery lake inside out and back to front uh, it really is uh, It's a great starting region and great for new players as well. It's a nice, uh, nice easy map to learn and a nice easy map to find resources and survive on. Coastal Highway is uh, a linked region. It links to uh, Mystery Lake and it also links to Pleasant Valley. And because Mystery Lake also links to Pleasant Valley, you've got a little circle going on here. You can go around in a loop if you like. So Coastal Highway is a slightly smaller region than Mystery Lake. A lot of it is occupied by the, um, the coastal waters it's frozen out to a certain point you can walk across it but then you walk it into the sea and that's the edge of the map uh, there is a crumbling highway that runs around the edge of it there's a town site and various buildings along there that are great shelter it's a little bit more hostile uh, there's uh, more hostile wildlife like wolves and bears that patrol closer to the shelters and the shelters are a little bit harder to get in and out of there's a couple of islands as well they're pretty good there's a couple of man-made structures on those islands uh, coastal highway also links off to another region which is a relatively new one called desolation point um, so you've got to link off to another region there so if you think about the the overall world map is made up of all these different regions all linked together um, so you can you can actually explore a massive amount of the world and this is desolation point it is a relatively new region links only to coastal highway that's the only way you can get to it is by walking through coastal highway and through the transition area um there are a couple of shelters on it you've got a lighthouse you've got a wrecked ship you've got a whaling uh, processing building which is a bit of a, a falling to pieces but it is a shelter it's relatively small there aren't many resources on it it's not a region i tend to spend much time on but one thing it does have is a forge and forges are part of the crafting system they allow you to basically be a blacksmith and make your own uh, metal tools like uh, knives and hatchets there's only two in the entire game world and one of them is in the wreck ship on desolation point it's about the only reason to go to desolation point to be honest pleasant valley is one of the other main regions of the game it's also one of the biggest it came in uh, with Coastal Highway, um, and obviously they both link to Mystery Lake, so that is the little circle of regions that you can walk around. It's quite a large region. 
uh, there's a fair bit of hostile wildlife. The bear wanders around, but he has got in the middle of it a great uh, building, the farmstead, which is a really big building, great indoor shelter, great place to set your base camp up. Um, right bang in the middle of the map as well. You can get around quite easily. There's large amounts of open space on this map, so you have to be careful when you're moving about with the wolves and what have you. Uh, it also links off to Timberwolf Mountain, which is one of the more hostile regions of the game. It's uh, a little bit more challenging region. Timberwolf Mountain. Uh, very advanced players. There's absolutely no man-made shelter at all on Timberwolf Mountain apart from one little mountaineer's hut right at the bottom. Uh, that really is about it. So it's a real challenging place to be. Very few resources. There is a crash plane. Um, that's about the only shelter there is. If you get up to the summit, there's the crashed uh, fuselage of the plane up there that you can shelter in, but you've obviously got to get to the summit first. And that is not always the easiest thing to do. So it's a it's a a real challenge for survival this one so uh, not one for new players uh, Timberwolf Mountain it only connects down to Pleasant Valley uh, so you have to go through Pleasant Valley and climb up through a transition area to get to it Floor Muskeg is a relatively new region that one's uh, come in one of the more recent updates it connects to Mystery Lake uh, and you can also pass through it to Broken Railroad which is a brand new region uh, Forlorn Muskeg is a real challenge. It's a frozen, frozen marshland. Um, it's a, a number of islands with frozen water in between, but the water is weak ice and um, you can easily fall through it. So you can only walk across certain pathways. If you try and cut across the islands over the weak ice, you'll fall into the freezing water of the marshland and then you will get yourself into all sorts of bother. So it's a little bit of a challenge. There's very few, if any, man-made shelters, actually. There's a broken rail car that you can shelter in and there's also um, a barn and the other forge this is where the other forge is it is a hostile region very few resources one that's a bit of a challenge to survive on so not a good starting region for new players but it's a bit of a it's a nice region to come and have a have an explore around once you're a bit more advanced and that links very nicely from forlorn muskeg to the brand new region if i'm going to click the button any moment now of broken railroad Broken Railroad is a brand new region. It came with a Winter Mute update in August. Uh, it connects only to Forlorn Muskeg at the moment. Uh, I haven't actually explored it too much, um, except for the little bit in story mode. The railroad passes along it. The, this is the railroad that ultimately runs from um, the top of Pleasant... Uh, is it Pleasant Valley or Coastal Highway? No, Coastal Highway um, through Mystery Lake and then across Forlorn Muskeg and to here. Um, there's a, um, a nice little camp hut there there's a rail uh, maintenance yard there which is a nice shelter but other than that i know very very little about this region so that's one that i think i'm uh, gonna have a look at in my next sandbox playthrough and of course when you're starting the game you can choose a completely random region each region has a, a number of probably about four or five spawn points so when you choose a region, you could spawn in any one of those four or five spawn points around that region. If you choose random, you're going to you're going to spawn in a random region at a random spawn point. So you could spawn anywhere in the game world, any one of the regions, uh, absolutely anywhere. It's not a great thing to do if you're a brand new player, because you don't know where you're going to end up. You could end up in the middle of, at the top of Timberwolf Mountain with no resources. So we're going to choose Mystery Lake. Uh, you can choose between uh, a male or a female character. These are not the uh, characters from the story mode uh, they are just generic male and female characters so uh, I tend to alternate between the two in each one of my playthroughs so I was the female last time I'm gonna be the male this time so again you can just choose all it does is change the voice to be perfectly honest with you uh, but you can make your choice whichever one you want to play as uh, obviously then you just need to save and name your sandbox so that's how we set up a new game that's all about the regions and the difficulty levels in the long dark so we're just going to load the game up and uh, we'll just <coughs> excuse me see where we spawn and we've got a, a little motivational quote to start the game off and it also just explains the 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 precept of the Long Dark that our oh, mysterious geomagnetic storm has brought our plane crashing down into the Canadian wilderness. How can we survive? Well, how far will we go to survive? Which is the big question of the Long Dark. And our little motivational quotes just to get ourselves started there. And we've spawned in Alan's Cave here on Mystery Lake. So it's quite a nice little location. It's reasonably sheltered. It's not a proper indoor location, so we are going to be below freezing here. Um, but it's a nice place, it's not very really far from proper man-made structures, so it's a great place to start the game with. Uh, and that is basically how you get into a new game and how you spawn. We're spawning with very little resources, 
in our pockets. Um, so we just kind of need to start thinking about how we're going to get ourselves going. We need to start thinking about finding some better shelter, getting ourselves uh, a fire going to stop ourselves from freezing, finding food, finding water, and getting started in survival of the long dark. Uh, and in the um, rest of the videos in this series, we're going to go through all those different elements. We're going to talk about the, uh, the menu system and how all the menus work and through the backpacks and how all the items work. We're going to talk about the clothing system. We're going to talk about how you make food or water, um, how you craft things, how you uh, hunt, and all those various things that you need to know in order to play and thrive in the long dark. Because that's ultimately the goal. The goal is to survive as long as possible in sandbox mode. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, give it a try. And um, hopefully, if, you, if you're if new to the game, please give it a go. Hope these tutorials will help you out. If you've got any questions at all, please do ask away. Drop them down there in the comment section. I am more than happy to have a chat. More than happy to answer any questions you may have. But I am going to say right now, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you again very, very soon.